like Steve Cummins has been stocking up. Chances are it's all been nicked. He's been lucky. The more he gets away with it, the cockier he gets. About time somebody taught him a lesson then. Explosion, Cummins Electrical Store. Oh, oh, yeah. It blew up! I just switched it off and it blew up! Oh, it blew up! Get up! It's a video recorder! It's been an explosion. Cummins Electrical, Duke Street. Steve Cummins? How is he? Shaken, not stirred. George and Dave were right outside when it happened. We're not certain. Please stay away from your windows. There may be a risk of further explosions. Stay away from the windows. What do we got? Passed by with a cup from the flying glass, but that's about it. The only other shop's a bit shaken. We've got him in the panda. Please stay behind the cordon. Go on. That'd be Steve Cummings, would it? That's right. He claims he was testing a video cassette machine and it's exploded. Who want to blow up Steve Cummings? He says he knows. The video was brought in this morning by Daniel Parks. Danny boy? We brought in two of them, apparently. The bomb squad will be checking the other one when they arrive. We know him, got. He's a teenage burglar. He's not exactly the first bomber suspect that springs to mind. Fred, we're definitely talking about an explosive device, are we? Yeah, I reckon so. Any idea what kind of explosive? Probably commercial. Plastics. Half an ounce, maybe. Doesn't sound a lot, but if he was standing over it when it went off... And it was inside the video recorder, was it? In figures, you can see pieces of video casing scattered everywhere, just inside the door. All right, thanks. All right. Better have a word with Cummings. Be my guest. George, Dave, can you keep yeah. these Come people? Come on, everybody, right back, back. See how it's from Deacon, you, you see? Go ahead. Hey, can you ask Donna if we've got a present address for Daniel Parks? Yeah, I'll get back to you. Thanks, Matt. How is he? He's a bit shaky, sir, but he refuses to go to hospital. Afraid someone might nick his stock. I think the irony was lost on him. Thanks, Gaff. They told you who it was. They told you. All right, all right. Toe rag. I can't believe it. Tell me what happened. I could have been killed. Are you sure you don't want to go in that angle? No. No, I'll be all right. I'll tell you what. It was one hell of a bleeding bang. So there was an explosive device in one of the video recorders that Danny Parks brought to you this morning. Little scumbag. I was just trying them out to see if they worked, and it blew up. Turning it on caused the explosion. I was using the remote. If I'd been standing next to you, I could have been killed! So what's his problem? You not been paying him enough money for the Ben videos he's been bringing you? I don't know nothing about that. The ID can from Sierra Oscar receiving. Of course not. Excuse me. Go ahead, Matthew. Got that address for you. The last we heard Parks was staying at Brim Street, number 6868, Student House. Right, thanks, Matt. Don! Go. Jim, Alan, over here. Right, that's Parks' present address. If you take Jim and Alan, go and bring him in, will you? I'll deal with Cummins. Go. Very nice. Bit of luck on the horses, was it? What? Oh, yeah, the jacket. It's all right, I suppose. He's been clocking his reflection in shop windows all morning. What? Are we going to pick up Danny Boy or what? I reckon you could pick up anybody in this. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, keep your eye on the basement. I'm Detective Sergeant Beach. This is DC Carver, Sun Hill. Is Daniel Parks here? What's he done? Can we come in? Do you know where he is? Oh, please, go where you like. Treat the place like your own, why don't you? He should clean your ashtrays more often. Who is it? Hello, Danny. It's our man, Jim. That's him. Did you take two video tape recorders into coming shop this morning? No. Don't know what they're talking about. Listen, you lot. I want you out. Miss, would you be so kind as to excuse us, please? We need to speak to Daniel alone.
Steve Cummings says you did take two videos into his shop this morning. One of those videos blew up, causing extensive damage to the shop. Steve Cummings only narrowly escaped serious injury. <laughs> You're going to share this with us? Right. What were your movements this morning? Oh, come. Right. I'm arresting you for handling stolen goods. You do not have to say anything, but it may and harm your no defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you have to rely on in court. Anything you do say will be given in evidence. Yeah? Nice one. You're nicked. What? Parks is spaced out enough to try and bomb somebody, but is he capable? I mean, he's not exactly technically minded, is he? You jacket. Giving you too much overtime. Right then, come on. Who's got any ideas? Perhaps Cummings was lying about it, being Parks who took the gear in. Why should he? Anyway, he wasn't a fit state to lie convincingly, was he? Maybe Parks was delivering it for someone else. Well, without knowing what was inside. I don't know, God. I'm just trying to make some sense of it, that's all. Well, try and make some sense out of this. The other video that Danny took into the shop wasn't booby-trapped. The bomb squad had checked it out. So, why take two videos into the shop, one booby-trapped and one not? Uh, Carl, the two videos you asked me to check, a Panasonic of the same model was taken during a burglary yesterday at a Mrs. Smith's flat in Frank Road, Harlow Court. That was the one that wasn't booby-trapped? Yeah, that's right. Have you got any record of the other one? No, nothing. So, where does that leave us? One of the videos was nicked. I'm going to have a chat with Danny Boy, see if he's more talkative than usual. Come on, Daniel. Where'd you get the videos? What about the one that exploded? Did someone pay you to take that to Cummins? Maybe you didn't know it was booby trap. But then again, Steve Cummins did say he looked like he was in a hurry to get out of the shop while he was checking them over. See, and that makes it look as if you knew what was inside. You can see how that looks suspicious, can't you, Danny? If you're asking us to believe that it was a coincidence, you're gonna have to tell us something. I'm not asking you to believe anything. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. How many villains in Sunhill know how to handle plastic explosives? Especially the small time low life that Cummings deals with. Maybe it was intended for someone else. Were there any other burglaries yesterday? No. Uh, there was another break-in, but nothing was taken at the same block of flats as Mrs. Smith. What, nothing was taken? No, I didn't reckon there was anything worth nicking. He's been done five times in the past 18 months. Popular bloke. Do we know him? James Hallett. No form as far as I know. Does some kind of security work. Used to be in the army. Experience with explosives? Right. I admit it. I planted the bomb. You planted the bomb? Yeah. I confess, you know, I'm, I'm a mad bomber. And while I'm at it, Elvis Presley lives, and I'm from the planet Nabula. Nabula. Thanks. Okay. James Hallett. RLC Explosive Ordnance Disposal Warrant Officer. Chucked out with a dishonourable discharge for assaulting a junior NCO four years ago. Several tours of duty in Northern Ireland. Bomb disposal. I told you yesterday, I didn't have anything taken. There's nothing left worth having. Well, we still need to speak to you again, Mr. Hallett. It won't take long. Can we... Are you sure you didn't have anything taken, Mr. Hallett? Nothing you might have forgotten? Well, I thought you'd been pleased. One less burglary to investigate. I see you've got all the connectors for a TV and video, but... No actual TV and video. Yeah, well, I didn't bother replacing them since the last time. Didn't seem worthwhile. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Sergeant. Do you mind? Day before yesterday's. 
So what is it, an offence? Not throwing away old newspapers? Home to the TV page. Well, I like to see what's on when I go round to my girlfriend. You know what it's like. First flush of romance is over. Togetherness is a night in front of the telly. Well, if that's all, I really have got things to do. Well, if you do think of anything that was taken, uh, you know... Now, one of the problems about living in flats, your neighbours can hear a lot of what's going on, including when you've got the telly on. You're going to ask her outright? There are ways of asking, and there are ways of asking. Hello, Mrs Smith. Yes? This is DS Beach, a colleague. Oh. We think we might have recovered your video. Oh, you've got the burglar? Oh, we think so. Oh, well, uh, come on in then. She's all right, she won't bite you. You'd like to go free. One point, though, before we arrange for you to come down and identify your property. We need to establish from a security angle how easy it is to hear what's going on in neighbouring flats. Oh. Can you, for instance, normally hear anything from the flat next door? Uh, walking about, or the television. He, he does have a television, does he? H have you heard it recently? <laughs> What's all this about televisions? I don't understand. Mrs Smith, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. How well do you know Mr Hallett next door? Not very well. We had a talk once. He's a nice enough fella. Loves that little boy of his. We need to know whether you've heard Mr. Hallett's TV recently. Oh, every night. Except... Yes? Come to think of it, I didn't notice it last night. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. So, we know he was lying about not having a TV. Looks like it. Bring him in and let's have a chat. Oh. Unfortunately, by the time we got back to the flat, he'd already left. Uh, Gov, it may be nothing, but I think we should consider the possibility that Hallett's booby-trapped the TV as well as the video. Alistair's bringing Parks through now, Gov. If Cummins had Hallett's video, maybe he had the TV as well. Yeah, but he didn't mention it, though, did he, Gov? And he did tell us about the other video. Do you want us to have a word with him? Yeah, I'll be through in a minute. Hey, it's done. Come on, Danny. Yeah, check him out. He might have sold it on already. See what he says. Hopefully, Danny will tell us where it is. But he's not renowned for being public spirited, are Danny? Gov. Danny Park, public spirited. <laughs> yeah. We have a witness who says you tried to flog him some gear. You, a known burglar, tried to sell two videos to a known fence, and we believe that you knew those videos were stolen. On account of having stolen them yourself. So charged, Beacon. We'll charge you, Danny! We just don't know what with. Burglary, handling, or attempted murder. Is he for real? You took a booby-trapped video cassette recorder into Cummins' shop, and it exploded. Cummins could have been killed. Work it out for yourself. You've got to talk to us, Danny. You nicked them, didn't you? You nicked the telly as well, didn't you? Did you sell the television to Cummings as well? Oh, come on, Steve. Did Daniel flog you a telly? Right. Ruined. Hey, hey, be careful. Did he or didn't he? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? I don't know. I've got a concussion, all right? I'm a bit hazy. Oi, hey, leave that alone. Clear up out of it. Go on. <sighs> Kick you in your damn. Can't trust nobody these days. Mr Cummins, the television. Did Daniel Parks bring in a TV along with the videos? Yeah, yeah, he did, all right? Yeah, he did bring one in. Gave it to a mate of mine. He asked me to look out for one. Who was that? Brian Mason, landlord of a Greyhound. Hello, Jim. Brian, did you buy a television earlier today off of Steve Cummings? Yeah. But where is it? What's in the other bar? He's just... Right, get everyone out of here. All right, all right, hang on a minute. Move that way, please. Hold it! I said hold it. Don't plug that in. Jim, get the telly. Take it outside. Hey? Just dump it in the car park. I'll clear the bar. 
I'm a police officer. Hang on, hang on. The match is on in a minute. Never mind about the match unless you want to take part in a space launch. There could be a bomb in there. What are you talking about? You've heard about the explosion at Cummings Electrical? Right. Exploding okay. consumer durables. Right, everybody. All right, Jim. Over to you. Gently, she goes. Okay. Got it? Yep. All right, steady. Oh, watch it! It's not exactly what you'd call a controlled explosion, is it? Well, it's the same difference. Well, Mrs. Smith won't be wanting it by, that's for sure. Ah, the heroes, Abbott and Costello. Didn't anyone tell you Mrs. Smith's telly was a Ferguson? That would have been nice. Yeah. Thanks, Alistair. What happened? The wrong one. Smashing up their telly five minutes before the big match. That your idea of community relations? Well, we did actually think it was a bomb. That's what you do with bombs, is it? Chuck them on the floor. Lucky there wasn't a riot. So we haven't found it. No, go. It was only the one TV that Park sold to Cummings. Let me write that one off. Well, you have. Yes, sir. And Danny Boy's being unforthcoming, so we're still minus one booby trap TV set. Any ideas? Uh, no sign of Hallett? None whatsoever. He's gone walkabout. Could have a word with Daniel's flatmates. They might know something. Pete, you manage that. The ice cream parlor disturbance. You free to deal? On way, Sarge. He put his fist through my front door. A pazzo. He went crazy. He went up the road. Must have hurt his hand. His hand? What about my bloody door? Why did he smash it? Some sort of argument? You know nothing. He come from nowhere. Then suddenly, boom! There he is! Destiny Cazzo! They're probably all out of it. Splitting up in the back there. Cummins Electrical. You were picked up in front of the shop in which there was an explosion earlier today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I was there? Absolutely correct. You're obviously upset about something. Oh, yeah. People don't go smashing their fists through doors for nothing. You reckon? I know you haven't had a great couple of years being chucked out of the army, trouble getting decent work, being burgled every other month. Well, I was court-martialed. I lost my job, my pension, and my wife. Oh, she didn't wait long. My boy went with her. Right? Stupid, really. One more year, and I'd have got my pension. Whereas young burglars are treated too leniently these days. They're laughing. At you, me, everyone. You decided to do something about it. Open the door! Open the door! So. You rigged up your video machine with an explosive device. The logic behind that being that it wouldn't be long before someone broke in and nicked it. That's what you did, isn't it? The television set booby trapped as well. It was nicked along with the video, wasn't it? You're very concerned about this burglar? Not really. He's in custody. Oh, yeah, have you? Well, congratulations. Is that a first? Mr. Hallett. Thieves sell the stuff they steal. Your booby trap could maim or kill an innocent person. Television is booby trap, isn't it? James, you're not a fool. You know perfectly well that the children, the wife, the mother of whoever has this TV set could be in the room when it explodes. We need to know the make so we can issue a warning. Come on, James. Well, 
the tapping effect of the casing was stronger than I thought. Made a mess of the shop, didn't it? Is the television booby trapped? You check in there. I'll look in the basement. How long have you had that? You what? How long have you had the television? Since this morning. Why? Did you get it from Daniel Parks? It's in lieu of rent. You're going to tell us it's nicked, aren't you? Oh, no. It's a lot more serious than that. Look, I want all of you out of this building right now. You what? Come on! Now! You enjoy ordering people about, don't you? No! Jean! What's going on? Call an ambulance! Jim! Jim! Oh. Ambulance. You alright, mate? Oh, yeah. You I'm sure? I don't believe it. Hey, Hello? you found that button then? Yeah. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. You all right? Have you got that ambulance? Yeah, I'm talking to them now. But just keep still, love. Hope's on its way. You're going to be all right. Don't touch anything. Oh, Just keep still. She gonna be all right? Not really, no. It tends to leave its mark, being blown up. We need to know where you got the explosives from. I shipped them back from Northern Ireland before I left. I'm gonna get prisoned by this, Anna. Hmm? Gonna know what I was doing. Well, that isn't going to make any difference with the courts, is it? You've probably scarred a young girl for life. You'll return in two weeks' time. We'll have made further inquiries by then. Understand? I don't know why you bother. Leave us to worry about that, eh? But you know I'm not going to say nothing. Doesn't matter whether the gear was nicked or not. If you can't prove that I was aware it was nicked, you've got nothing. CPS will kick it out. You know that. Two weeks. It's a waste of police resources. Shocking, I call it. See you then. Don't you want to know what hospital your flatmate was sent to? Nah. 